Hello, welcome to day eight. So today we are shifting focus and we are moving on to stage two, which is all part of your personal brand plan. And I'm going to be talking about packaging, which is sort of uh, to do with how you pull together your services and offerings and products and all that good stuff. But invariably, I'm going to be talking about money as well. So if that's not for you, or you get a bit freaked out um, talking about money, I was going to say this one's maybe not for you, but actually it probably is. It probably is time to enjoy the process, whatever that means. Um yeah, it's it's been a journey, let's just say. And I want to talk about this because what we see on the internet is this sense of female empowerment, I guess, where people will do a blog post or they'll say something like, I made this number of pounds, I was nothing and now I'm doing this. And firstly, I quite often have a bit of an issue with this because it's not sharing the full story. So somebody might say, I had a 100k launch, but if they have no profit from that, that doesn't really interest me because it feels like a lot of work just to be jazzy about all the numbers. And so even though we are opening up conversations around money, around packages, around how we fully support our clients, what I feel is missing is this nuance of how do you get cash flow moving quickly? How do you get to a stage where things feel consistent? How do you get, get to a stage where you don't freak out when a bill comes through? How do you get really comfortable with talking about money and being excited about it rather than it being something you dread? If you've been, um, well, I guess my first thing that I can share is you leave conversations where people are scaremongering about money. You leave Facebook groups where people are saying, I don't know if I should charge or I charge them 20 pounds and now I feel a bit weird about like, no, I know you're at a certain point where you're like, let's do this. Let's go to the next level. Let's think about things. Now, I have been listening to the audio book by Rachel Rogers called We Should All Be Millionaires. And you might already be thinking, but I don't want to be a millionaire, Nikki. I just want to make enough money so I can do X, Y and Z. And the goal necessarily isn't the million. It's not the number. But one thing that I'm really enjoying is that somebody is speaking really audaciously about money because it's not just about a figure. It's not just about the flashy spreadsheets. It's about you could do some really great things in the world. And I've talked about this a lot. You know, I want to build a charity. I want to have a food bank. I want to continue to grow this podcast to such a level where it can just support people. I always think about the people whose um, husbands or partners may think that they're having an affair in the spare bedroom, but actually all they're doing <laughs> is listening to some self-development podcast and really thinking about their ideas. But it feels a bit terrifying to talk about it just yet. So um, that always makes me laugh, that moment of like, I'm just going in the other room. What are you doing? Nothing. Um, um. But, the <laughs> but the thing about Rachel Rogers is what I love about her is that she talks about money and growth mindset in a way that was never shared to me. And I guess this is where I want to start. I've seen it as being of a boy and a girl. So I have from my mum and dad, even though we've sort of got blended families on both sides, from my mum and dad, um, there's me and my brother. And growing up, how we were spoken to, not necessarily about by my parents, but by those around us, that sense of when I was 17, um, people would be saying like, oh, you know, maybe you should think about driving. And when my brother was 17, it's like, what are you going to have as your first car? 
And it's been really interesting, especially in, well, in all kinds of situations, the expectations on girls, the expectations on boys, what boys are allowed to, in brackets, in, not in brackets, in, <laughs> I can't do the right gesture, in quotation marks, what boys are allowed to get away with and how they're spoken to, but what the expectations for girls are. And I see it now with my boy and a girl. So I have a boy and a girl now and the way that people speak. So already I'm noticing how people have spoken to my son and how they talk about my daughter. And already, even I think Luna was maybe about nine months where people started to say, oh, she looks like she knows her own mind. Oh, she's a handful. And, you know, she was probably just shouting in a supermarket and expressing herself in some way. Um, She wasn't doing anything particularly horrifying. But it was really interesting because had my son done that, people might have said, oh, he's so cute. Isn't that lovely that he's having a little sing along? And it's even more stark now of what do we do this? Now, I saw a woman speaking on Instagram and I don't really like doing this and calling people out. And I would like to say that if we met in person, I would have a conversation about this. But She had done some work recently and she said it on her stories. Oh, I've done I've done loads of work for this company and now I have to send the invoice. Does anybody else hate doing that? And I watched it and I watched it again. And then I thought, no, I don't. I don't like dread sending the invoice. I love sending the invoice because it keeps everything really clean. It keeps everything in a boundaried way. It means I can deliver. It means that I can pay my bills early. Yes, that's what I said early because I used to just pay them on time or sometimes late many years ago. But now I pay them early because for me, I like being ahead. I like knowing what I'm doing. I am taking care of things. And so it was really interesting for me looking and thinking about that block. And maybe it was a block, firstly, because she didn't really need to send the invoice. It wasn't a case of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to buy some shopping this week if I don't send it kind of felt like it was coming from a very privileged place because she knew that she would have, I mean, I am, you know, putting my own stance on this. I don't know any of this for sure. So obviously I would be very happy to be proven wrong. But it's really interesting noticing how people talk about money. And my sense is that we have to be really careful about it and talk about it in different ways. And this is the moment that we need to pay attention to our words, where we need to really check in and see what's going on. And so as you go through this week, I want you to think about the stories that you're telling yourself or the things that are coming up for you. So are you somebody that when somebody inquires about your services, you automatically think, well, I'll just give this thing for free or I'll just knock a discount off because they might be able to purchase that. And I, I, you know, I'll just do that. I'll just make it easier or I'll just add in something else, an extra bonus Or are you noticing that you're not asking for the sale? Are you noticing that you're giving way too much to your customer that you're um, completely undercharging? Or maybe you have got comfortable at a certain point and actually it's so comfortable that you're not doing what you said that you would do. Or you're not having containers where you can keep these packages running. So today, day eight, or rather day one of this second stage, is really about noticing what is going on. And when I mean this, noticing what words, what language, 
what stories are surrounding your packages and really notice which are the ones that are very easy to share, which are the ones that you're drawn to talk about and which are the ones that you're just a bit uneasy about. So I remember I um, priced together this like six month program. This is probably about six years ago. And I was like, right, the six month program. But I didn't necessarily believe in this program, not because I didn't believe in the power of coaching. I did, but I didn't necessarily believe that somebody would sign up and bet on me and bet on themselves to work together for six months. It was really interesting. And what happened then, because clearly there was some sort of underlying stuff going on, It was time to really notice what was going on and put my focus somewhere else and pay close attention. So it's quite a biggie today. I want you just to notice anytime something comes up, whether it's to do with money, so whether you're in the supermarket buying something, whether it's those thoughts that you're having in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, I feel a bit icky. Simply invite yourself to question to question what is going on. Why are you feeling like that? What's behind it? And really be a detective around this story. That's it for today. Thank you so much for listening as always. If you're interested in getting the full shebang, so this full course, you can listen to all the previous podcast episodes. I've put them together within Podia. So there's a mini course there for you called Everyday May. It's completely and utterly free. But equally, if you've been floating around the same kind of numbers and those numbers are not necessarily making you feel great or you just feel like you're leaving money on the table, do book in a free 15 minute session with me. Let's have a conversation. Let's really make this second half of the year sing for you and um, take your business to where you know deep down it's supposed to be. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm sending so much love and hope you have a lovely one. Take it easy.